drug game, I got caught up in a little action. I had to do a little bit of time. So I met this dude named Ryan Higgins in jail. And he kind of like, you know, inspired me to want to get involved with music. <laughs> well, first of all, when I met him, it was kind of like Lawrence had kind of schooled me on him a little bit. He was kind of gangster. Dana, Dana was, Dana was a real character, man. Sometimes Dana came off almost as a cartoon character, character. But you loved. There's something. There was something about Dana, Dana's passion, and and his and his his credibility, his passion, and you just you had to love the guy because talking about keeping it real. I mean, you know, what you saw is what you got with Dana. They come in named Frankie Crocker, and they they, they would treat him like a god. So I, you know, I ran up to him. I said, Yo, man, I got a record. I went, Oh, no, no, you can't talk to me, you gotta talk. I said, wait a minute, you got a mouth like everybody else, I don't wanna talk to you. I didn't really go through no process of trying to get no record deal, you know, struggling and all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, my pops was a made nigga in the game. I'ma tell you straight up, wouldn't have been no cold chilling, no cane, no G-Rap, no none of that, because I wouldn't have been in that mindset. My mindset was radio. Then it put us in a whole nother mindset that shows what record business was about. I really learned what real hip hop was from LG. We were like the, the pioneers and we was you know, building the frontier for the whole movement. Most of, I mean, most of the rap that came out of Philadelphia at that time was LG. They was early pioneers. And Lawrence Goodman, I mean, he had DJ Jazzy Jeff, he had Will Smith. I mean, he was one of the. My mother is one of the pioneers. Stand it clearly, he's a pioneer of East Coast hip hop, period. Talking to Roxanne Shante over the years about how her first opportunity had to come outside of New York. New York was the Mecca. This was the place where everything was coming from. And here was his major um, uh, song out called Roxanne, Roxanne. And Roxanne's Revenge was from a New York artist that had to come to Philly to get put on. Some records played so we could sell some records and make money until we found the Roxanne and Pop Art took off. You know, being that we were the first ones to actually put out a diss record. This is the beginning of the era of dissing, which we started with the Pop Art with Roxanne Shante. There wasn't even no such thing as dissing people ever known before in hip hop. We were the first ones to do it, and from there on we set the precedent for people to diss each other on the record. From the standpoint of his involvement with Pop Arts, his involvement with uh, 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 salt and pepper, his involvement with Roxanne Shante, Molly Maul, Biz Marquis. Understanding now is that this man has contributed to the uh, hip hop period, not just on the East Coast, but the exposure that hip hop received, period. And we had like kind of like set the precedent for setting up a lot of New York acts to get into the music business. Jazzy Jeff and Will Smith were first two rap stars that ever received a Grammy. First show Will Smith ever did, Dana Goodman brought him to us. Do their first um, interview or show or whatever, they think that they didn't really do that great. So he, he leaned on my shoulder with tears in his eyes saying he ain't really, that, you know, I don't think I did that well. And I had to, you know, I had to reassure him that he did great. Of course, Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince were undeniable because of their uh, tremendous success. Every time you get up in the morning and say your prayers, you thank God for life, health, strength, and Dana Good. I mean, look at the songs. I mean, come on. That was that, that was a no-brainer. They had the, the banging songs, the songs that you wanted for hip-hop. Marley Maul, that crew, we kind of like had that pretty much established. So then we started looking back home. Well, they were putting out some good product. I mean, by large. And Cool C's song, Glamorous Life. Yo, that was brought to me. I can't remember exactly who brought it to me. But out of the box, I knew it was a hit. Cool C, because I was, I thought, I thought that he was very talented. And um, he had a lot going for him. And uh, unfortunately, he got involved in a bank robbery. But I never heard Cool C involved in that. 
And then for him to be caught up in that, and, and I was really, really shocked. Once again, once, this, once, once you lose your drive and your commitment, then you're going to get sucked into whatever influences are prevalent in your environment. They took all the groups that they had signed to us, they took them back. That shit costs a lot of paper, and nigga just lead a group. Next night came, I told him he ain't played my record, you know, that you know, you're going to have trouble. We don't play this record, what we got tomorrow with him. Matter of I ain't playing shit. Came to, you know what I mean, if it came to me pulling the trigger on it, 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 it that's what it would have been. Walked in the middle of 42nd Street and 3rd Avenue and said, come on, let's get with it.